On this slightly rainy day, we're going to try and make a uh, 3D map of about a quarter of the lake behind me. Uh, the boat that I'm going to be using is this uh, Eames Lab low-cost mapping boat. Uh, it's got a Cube autopilot in it, which is uh, directly connected to an Echo Logger ECT400 uh, underwater sonar with a range of about uh, 100 meters. Uh, the frame itself is a boogie board and it's got two blue robotics thrusters on the bottom. Okay, so here's the mission that's been loaded. Uh, we are up here, and uh, you can see it's just back and forth across the lake uh, about four times, and a total of uh, 1.6 kilometers. Uh, right at the end of the mission is a uh, return to launch. The boat is armed in manual mode. Now I'm going to switch it into auto. Great, I can see over here on the sonar range that it seems to be working. It's already you know, 12 meters, 13 meters. Oops, looks like we got stuck on something. I'm switching to manual mode. I think we got stuck on something out there. I'm going to switch it back in auto again. Seems like maybe it's gotten stuck on something. So we temporarily take over in manual mode. I'm gonna switch it back in auto again. Off it goes. Oh, 
think it got itself clear. You can see here that we've got a bunch of leaves in the, the little piece of wood in the propellers. I disarmed it, so maybe I'll turn it off as well. Now we connect with the mission planner. And then download the data flash log file. I'm going to move that log file into its own directory. Create a new directory here. And then we'll go get the log that we just downloaded from the surface boat directory. It'll be the most recent one from today, which is just going to get both of this, the bin and the dot log. Next, we can have a quick look at the depth data from the mission planner. Uh, go into the flight data screen, data flash logs tab, and click review a log. And just select the binary file that we just downloaded. Then we can uh, click on the DPTH on the right and click the depth field. And now we can see, if we turn off the messages, that. Uh, you know, we've got you know, reasonable looking values here. Uh, looks like you know, it's about 13 or 14 meters at its deepest point, getting occasional spikes up to 50 meters, which are just presumably bad data. And then it gets down to you know, two or three meters uh, in some places. So this looks reasonable. So now we're going to load the file up into Excel. We can probably use some other tool if you'd like to extract the depth data. So we've opened up the file in Excel and now we're going to filter it because we only want the depth data. So this depth data there. So this is the data that we've got. I'm just going to select all of this. And put it on a new page. Okay, and then we're going to save this as a text file. So what this is going to be called, let's call this depth depth August. Like that. There we are. Okay, now we're going to view the data in ReefMaster. We'll select a workspace. So we go to File, Import Logs and Waypoints. Then we select the directory where that depth file is, select that. Then we set the row format separator to be tab. And the latitude is in column three. The longitude is in column four and the depth is in column five. The units are all in meters, so the rest should be fine. Just click in there and press OK. And then go back here and we should see under tracks the file is listed. We can double click on it and the track appears here. We can see down at the bottom the depths. So about 14 meters there and getting as low as 2 meters or so near the shore. We want to zoom out a little bit I think. There 
we are. Press the minus to zoom out. Next, I'm going to, again, right mouse button, click on the tracks, and add track to map project. Select new project. I'll call it Sakamoto Dam, which is where it was. Press OK. Then here, we can just zoom out a bit more again. Select the map project. Then we're going to define the map area. Click on that. Then select a square box around the data, like that. And then generate map. There we are. So now it's produced sort of a T 2D view of the map, which is nice. We can also look at a 3D view by clicking this button. And then we can rotate it around. Right, so we can you know, see if the shoreline is quite shallow, then gets deep. And then, you know, right in the middle, it's all around 14 meters or so.